Today, I want to read to you from something that Jesus said in perhaps the most famous sermon ever preached, the Sermon on the Mount. Here we go, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14, 15, and 16, where we read this. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Again, that's Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. When you think about it a little bit, it really is a great compliment. Jesus said to us, believers, his followers, you are the light of the world. In this, he gave Christians both a great compliment and a great responsibility because he claimed the title light of the world for himself as he walked this earth. You can find that in John chapter 8, verse 12, and in John chapter 9, verse 5. Light of the world means that we are not only light receivers, we are also light givers. We must have a greater concern than only ourselves, but we cannot live only to ourselves. We must have someone to shine unto, and we need to do this lovingly. We also notice that Jesus never challenged us to become salt or light, in Matthew chapter 5 at least. Jesus simply said that we are salt, that we are light, and that we are either fulfilling or failing that given responsibility. A key thought in both the pictures of salt and light is distinction. Salt is needed because the world is rotting and decaying. And if our Christianity is also rotting and decaying, it won't be any good. Light is needed because the world is in darkness. And if our Christianity imitates the darkness, we will have nothing to show the world. To be effective, we must seek and display the Christian distinctive. We can never affect the world for Jesus by becoming just like the world. Therefore, Jesus said this, Let your light so shine before men. The purpose of light is to illuminate and to expose what is there. Therefore, light must be exposed before it is of any use. If it is hidden under a basket, it's no longer useful. This picture of light also reminds us that the life marked by the Beatitudes is not to be lived in isolation. We often assume that those inner qualities can only be developed or displayed in isolation from the world. But Jesus wants us to live them out before the world. Now, previously, Jesus said that his followers should expect persecution. Of course, Jesus knew that with such a threat, we would be tempted to hide our light and not draw the world's attention to ourself. Yet Jesus never seemed to contemplate the existence of secret Christians. Christians whose virtues would never be on display. Jesus also said that we should be like a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Such a city is prominent and, and everybody can see it. If you can see such a city from a distance, it's hard to take your eyes off of it. In the same way, Jesus wanted the people of his kingdom to live visible lives that attract attention to the beauty of God's work in their life. Applying the same logic, Jesus continued, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. The idea of a lampstand gives the sense that we are to be intentional about letting this light shine. Even as lamps are placed higher so their light can be more effective, we should look for ways to let our light shine in greater and broader ways. Putting the three pictures from this section together, we see what should be the effect of Jesus' disciples in this world. Salt is the opposite of corruption, and it prevents corruption from getting worse. Light gives the gift of guidance, so that those who have lost their way can find the path home. 
A city is the product of social order and government. It is against chaos and disorder. Did you notice? Jesus pointed to a broad impact in the disciples that must have seemed almost ridiculous at that time. How could these humble Galileans salt the earth or light the world? But you know something? They did. By the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus working in them, they did. So can we.